um, any more will be pushing it because it keeps going up. The floor will just dig into the ground. Okay, so we're going to build this within with um, one thing in mind. We want to have a small little walkway around the side of the building that allows you to go up the stairs. So instead of using space inside of the house and losing that that space to be able to put beds or, or equipment, we're going to put the stairs outside, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and place a wall. I'm using the very first one in the wood wall section, shack wall. It's the one that has the most coverage without any holes and things like that. But you can use, um, as long as it's a flat wall without the overhang. Here you have an overhang, and that's very difficult to place on top of, to build on top of, when you're going to build something that's two or three or four stories high. So it's important to use something flat like this that doesn't have the overhang. All right, let's place the back wall here. Okay, now I'm going to put the door closest to the part where... Um, actually... Okay. Place the door. This one will have an overhang. And... To compensate for that, we might have to put a piece forward. We'll see first. This is the only doorway available in the wood structure. Go back to the left and place a wall to the right of the door. And a wall to the left of the door. Before we start building further, go back to the wood sec... Uh, floor section and continue going to the right until you see right after shack upper floor shack floor that is a smaller square four of these equal one of these so I want you to grab the small square okay And we're going to try to snap it. We're going from the doorway around to my left here. until you reach the very end of this wall there. We'll figure out the gap situation in a second. I see. Here's, um, here's the reason why it's the door frame. So I'm gonna store the door frame and see if I can fix the floor okay that's what we'll do remove the door just store it with circle and we'll replace the flooring you can even stand on it while you go it's nice and easy quick. And one more. Okay. Now we're going back to the floor section and instead of a small piece, one over to the left, shack upper floor. The very first one in this 
is is for the bottom floor so it won't work to go above your head to make a second floor you need to go to just to go to the one that's called shack upper floor and again just walk until it snaps in place automatically and we're going to go ahead and put the ceiling above us it's important not to use the roof section because again those have an overhang on them or a fancy metal roof structure that will get in the way we won't be able to build on top if you're happy with the one level and just having this one floor building you can stop here place your front door and you're good to go maybe a little bit of the steps which I haven't I'm leaving towards the end to do but you can stop here if you'd like for those of you who would like to continue with me we're going to place a uh, set of stairs now that are going to reach the top floor and again this is utilizing the best space so that we can keep these six squares of space available for beds and furniture and other things like that keeping the staircase outside also serves as a great way to um, be able to fight any invading um, raiders mutants anything like that or synths and you can actually stand on the set of staircases we're going to put a hand railing around so you can use it as balconies to defend against attacks so it's multi-purpose going to count two squares and place the long staircase shack stairs the second one when you go to wood stairs and we can adjust this after you place it it's just something you have to eyeball at the moment pick again the shack floor that's the small square size and after you place the ladder I want you to snap in the wood floor should be one piece because after we place it we can then take the ladder move it and it automatically snaps into place isn't that perfect okay once you've placed your ladder you have a place to uh, you know kind of land and, and not fall off we're now on the second floor we can actually build from right here we're gonna head go to the wall section pick the first wall again and start building the back wall you'll notice throughout the tutorial I'm building with the beams towards me on the inside so that the outside when you're looking at the building will all be lined up and it'll be this flat side this is just preference. You can choose either one. If you don't mind and they're mismatched, that's great too. It's it's basically just pick which you, one you like. In order to twist them around, just use R2 and L2 to rotate the piece until it's facing the direction you want. Now you see it snapped out. That's okay. Take the right analog stick and R2 and just rotate it adjust your body until it snaps in place again and then you can go ahead and place it one of these will have to be moved but i just need to place it and then decide after i'll show you it'll be for the next set of stairs um okay so we need to figure out entrance for this part i would like it to be the door frame
I wonder if it's gonna let me. Let's check downstairs first. Okay. Okay, it did work. Uh, so it is better to put it after you've put the ceiling and the side walls because of this overhang. Um, it doesn't work well if you have a roof piece instead of a floor piece. But since this is a doorway without a roof piece attached to it, it works. So we're going to put the ceiling and the floor above us down before we try to put the doorway here. We're going back to the floor section and use shack upper floor. Nice and quick. Done. Alright. We used this right side here for the wraparound staircase to go up. And... We're going to place this wall into storage, so hit, uh, look at it until it's highlighted. Select circle and store it in the workshop. Go to the floors again and select shack floor, the one to the right of the upper floor, the smaller square. And we're going this direction toward, uh, across the front of the house right above our front entrance. I'm going to try Okay, so I want you to just put flooring down until this last um, where the wall ends then look up, look up and try to place a floor piece the small square here right above you at, at this corner here okay and then skip a space and then place the flooring above your head you can move around to continue the flooring okay until you reach this side of the wall so this is all across the front side of the building and you just skipped one space in your building workshop, go back to stairs and go to the second set of stairs here and try to line it up with the floor. I'm going to place it down and then snap it like we did earlier because sometimes it has to do with where on the stairs you're looking. If you look here, hit X and then try to place it, you can't see and you can't tell it where you want to attach it, right? So I hit cancel. So raise your head and then hit X on the upper part of the staircase. And it may not always work, it's just the way that the building mechanic is, it's not anything you're doing wrong. So just keep trying to see if you can get it to snap in place. If it's snapping everywhere except where you want it to go, try use the L2 and R2 feature to rotate it. If that doesn't fix it, we're going to use the same little trick that we did the first time. So I'm going to hit circle to cancel. look approximately in the middle and I'm going to try no it won't let me okay so I'm going to hit circle cancel that take one piece and store it so I can fit as I climb up the stairs okay stand on this first piece here now it, it really matters where you look 
on the staircase. Look right here at the top. Select with X. All I did is just look down and it automatically snapped. So now I can place that other piece of flooring back. Go to the wood floors and pull it up. And there you go. Look at that. If uh, it is too tight. Okay, so we can store it and use it for the next one. We'll need two, um, on the spell there, two pieces of a, a two, how do you say this? Two square pieces to make the gap instead of the one, okay? And now that we are up top, this will be the third floor and the final floor. We have a really great vantage point up here. We're going to place our walls now. Where is it? Okay. If this snaps and it's not listening to your commands, try to rotate it, change your body's position. It happens a lot, it's okay. It's detecting this flooring here, that's why. So we'll move to the left instead and tell it to line up here or not. All right, let's try this. Okay, the next best thing to do is remove the flooring for the moment, store it. If you do scrap it, that deletes it, but you don't get every bit of resource back. You get about half of your resources back. So only scrap it if it's absolutely necessary and you know you're not going to use them again. Now, let's go ahead and try and place the walls. Perfect. And this one is going to be a doorway. Okay. This is going to work very nicely. Before we close it up, let's put that flooring back. The small square pieces. If I go down to the second floor and look up, I should be able to snap it in place easily. Should be being the operative word. <laughs> oh boy. I know it, it, it keeps wanting to do it wants to snap, it's just having identity crisis or something. I'll even take it in the wrong spot if you just do it. Okay, that's the wrong spot, but that could work. Here we go. Okay. And now we can remove Remember it's a two spot, two piece gap. Okay. Now that we're on the third floor, I do want you to put a wrap around around the, the right side of the building that we didn't put earlier. And this will be for defending the property, the settlement. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. And try to jump. Okay. Small pieces again. They change direction and you don't want them to, you can use the rotate button. I 
I have to mic it. Okay. This is good. We can definitely do a lot from up here. We can even go around the back. You just might have an issue clearing the pole, this metal pole. Uh, it shouldn't be... Oh, yeah, you'll clear just fine. It shouldn't be a problem. It's not against the building. Okay, now let's place our ceiling. This is up to you whether you want to place a roof. Um, let's say a flat roof or one of the fancier designs. It really is uh, up to you. I want to be able to use the roof as a possible sniping uh, post for my guards. I want to leave that open to decide later. So I'm going to place the flooring, the shack flooring above my head. And we're almost done. Okay, in the wood structures section, we're going to go all the way to the right to the miscellaneous category. There are some hand railings here to choose from. And I think I'm going to pick... Ooh, I'm kind of not sure which one I like better. I've never used this one before. We're going to use this one. It, the nice thing about it is that wood beam, the two wood beams that go across, the bottom one will line up with the wood flooring that you're attaching it to. So instead of trying to take it and place the, the physical bottom of the railing on the edge of your, especially when you're above ground, but on the edge of the flooring, instead you can let it snap into place the way that it is here. I feel like it's straighter and also more secure. this wall and continue the railing across. We've probably used uh, about 100, 150 steel on this project. Um, the wood, I lost count, it might be around double that, um, approximately 300 to 400 at estimating a little bit more keep an eye on the bar on your screen and in the workshop mode you'll see size it turns yellow when you're getting close to being full there is a limit for how much you can build on one settlement but since I know that I'm going to be taking down the structures that I put up back there um, maybe not all of it but I am going to be taking down some of the excess things so that I can decrease the size um, of, you know, build size here. I want to put beds, build equipment such as the workshop table, chemistry table, uh, armor table, weapons table, and also have a generator um, inside, that, inside that room to be able to power some security measures and some lights. So that'll help with the build size and it'll also keep things nice and organized, which I love. I love keeping things organized. <laughs> so if you're interested in having access to the top floor, you'll place a ladder here the way that we did below to reach the um, top floor. And again, just fly, uh, do like a blind lineup. Okay, and then you can place the small squares above, 
climb up to it, line it up, just like we did with these three floors. All right, this looks fantastic. I'm really happy with the balcony and railing that we placed down here. Let's place um, some on the second floor really quickly. This helps also when you're being chased or in a hurry, it helps you to not fall. So it's got several purposes. But as I mentioned earlier, you can stand here and defend the building. You've got three to four sides that you can cover if you put um, a small little balcony around the back side of the building too. And I'm actually still debating on that. We might uh, do a little video on little additions to the building. But this is the basic build here. We're going to put maybe one or two more things and we're done. We still need the doors, but it looks um, even better than the first time that I did it. So I'm really happy with it. And if you're worried about this bottom area here being exposed... There are some things you can do to block it, um, but I wouldn't stress too much. If you know that it's an issue from the beginning, um, we have to go walk to the workshop table. You can place a foundation instead of the wood structure with the beams that we put as the bottom. As the foundation, you can use an actual uh, foundation piece that's, I think, cement on the bottom. So that, that will solve your problem there. Okay. Now. Let's see. Okay. Basically. Last remaining. Let's take a look at the stairs now. We have a small set angling your body to the side parallel to where you want the steps to go, you should be able to place the fourth style um, in the wood stairs section. And it, it will depend on, you know, how high or how low you place the foundations. You might need to put two of these. And if that doesn't work, it's still too high above the ground, right? and you think they won't jump to get go inside, you can use the small stairs. It's called a half, and it, it works really well. There you go. Boom. See? So either one will work here, and for you it, it just depends on how high um, from the ground. You gotta use your judgment there on whether a little staircase or the ladder works better. On the bottom floor, I am going to, okay, this is just a matter of preference. If you think your settlers are not smart enough to make it to the top floor and you want to put the beds down here, you can do that. I've tested it out. They do go upstairs um, as long as everything is, you know, connected. They'll, they'll follow the, the ladder system and they'll come upstairs. So I'm going to place the beds up here. I'm going to choose this last bed style. I think it's my favorite out of all of them. Oh, okay, about this bed, this came in the DLC package for building. One of the um, one of the ones where it's like it adds supplies to your workshop 
for um, other designs. So any one of these will work. Really doesn't matter. It's just aesthetics, right? Uh, Alright, you want to place about one bed width apart so they can get in and out of it. It's about skip one space and then place another bed. Easy peasy. And now I'm gonna turn it like this. Place it as close to the walls as I can. Use the one on the left as a guide a little bit and the flooring so it's straight. This one we need to place a little differently because of the doorway. You may not see, just walk in between it yourself to verify that the settlers can get in. Okay, this can be closer to the wall. Opening up the space here. It's kind of like a dorm room. Okay, now let's put the door in. Make sure the flap is facing outward. Okay. I did not factor in the balcony. Okay. Um, I don't want to sacrifice the balcony uh, just to put a doorway in. So I'm going to leave them open. There was something. Okay. This powered door is also part of one of the DLC packages you can buy. That's, it's not a level or a new map or anything or missions. It's specifically just for building in the workshop. Um, it's a powered door and you can place it inside of your houses without worrying about that overhang. The problem is, is I was trying to do this tutorial all without anything from a DLC. Not everyone has access to that. So this I'm going to leave as an option. You can leave it open or you can use the power door. Um, you'll notice it has a marauder kind of helmet symbol down below that might give you a little bit of information if you go to the DLCs in, in the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store and you'll be able to see which package this belongs to. If you need any information on that, just let me know and I'll look it up for you. I'm going to leave it the, the doors blank for the moment, the doorway open to keep it as a vanilla tutorial. and. This really isn't a problem since it's above ground. As long as the first floor has a doorway, I think we're okay. So let's put one of the doors here. We'll go with color. This is pretty nice. I like this one. Let's do this one. Yeah, I like it. Okay. While we're on the first floor, let's put in a piece of power um, equipment. And we'll put a generator in. We're going to put a medium sized generator. Uh, hold on, I have to think about this. It might be a problem getting the power cord outside. Okay, we'll leave it for the moment. 
Let's place a light bulb in. Okay. This looks really nice, guys. I'm really, really happy. I think you're really going to like it. Just walking back and forth from placing everything in. It seems like it's very easy to maneuver around. I really like that. Okay. All right, that looks really good. Go upstairs. And on the third floor, we'll place more beds. I'm going to go get them from the other part of the settlement. Save on those resources instead of building them twice. And you can see the layout wasn't ideal for me. I really did place everything just temporarily. I had to put the beds anywhere I could find space and while that's fine really as long as you have enough beds I I know that um, it, it's not exactly easy for for them to get to the beds in some of the areas so that's also been another concern up here and that just shows you that when you reach a settlement that's really small but you have enough people to fill like a big settlement you can send them to other settlements for um, for them to to stay there permanently or just for the moment and until you can build more beds, more housing, and if you don't have the space to go for a, uh, to build a house that's large, one story, just build upward. The DLCs are great for that because they've released scaffolding, so you can um, climb these ladders and things like that while you're building, and you can actually reach it without. If, if you don't know exactly what it's going to look like and you don't have it planned ahead of time, you can put some scaffolding outside and use that to build. Move around and then just take it down when you're done. Okay, this is the third floor. And now we're going to place the rest of the beds. We have about 16 people in this settlement at the moment. So... We need at least 16 beds. I'm just trying to use the same beds that I had before. As close to the walls we can get. Always make sure that there's enough space in between. These aren't like the sleeping bags. So if they're too close together, they won't be able to get on the bed. And then it'll say, you don't have enough beds even though you know you do and they'll be upset and their happiness meter will go down so this leaves us with 13 and here let's see I'm gonna jump on a bed and use part of this wall to place two beds instead of just one I don't want to block the doorways. Okay, that's 15. I do think we can fit one right here. Not ideal. Um, we'll probably put it on the first floor. Or maybe there's enough. 
oh, the other thing I did want to say is you can place the beds um, from foot to foot or head to head. That does also work in this situation to fix the spacing issue. So if you place them like that, again, this is a matter of where you look on the bed. I made it nice and lined up by changing my perspective. So grab this mattress here. I thought I lost the bed. And footboard to footboard. And now they'll all be able to get into their beds. And you can get to the other side of the balcony here with no issue. Okay, we have our light bulb up here. Let's see what the bed 17 looks like. If you can still come inside, we place the bed. Yeah, as long as there's enough space, there's at least one floorboard length of space, so let's do it. Okay. As long as the beds are in place, you do not need to assign a, vill a settler to them. They'll do it themselves. So right now, as you can see, they went from red to blue or green is in your case. I changed the color of my uh, pit boy and my, uh, my HUD menu so that I can personalize it. So yours will be green, but as long as it's not red, when it's red, it means that that's that one bed that hasn't been assigned to somebody yet. And it always changes after a minute. It'll turn blue. If I get a, a 17th person in, we're almost at our build limit, but we still have space to put the, um, conduits for the electricity. And then I'll, I'll take more of the structure down there down and then we'll clear up this from reaching, um, you know, from reaching its maximum size limit. If you go to your power section under connectors and switches, you'll need to select a con a power conduit, the second one that goes on the side of a building and we are going to place them on the left side of the building that's one Two, and then three. I'm leaving the option to still move them. I just want to get the three of them in place and start running the electricity. Okay. We need, oopsie, okay, a pylon. We're gonna use a lot, our large pylon. And placement here, you use the angles. So the first two floors will be able to reach this, no problem. The third floor will have to adjust in order for um, them to be able to link up. You can't have something in the way. That's where the problem lies. So let's go ahead and place the large pylon down because we're at the end of the road here of the build. It looks so good. I'm really happy with it. Love to hear how your builds go. And did I just, yes, I did. Okay. All right. I'm going to cancel that so I can move. Let's see. You see how I went to the pylon, grabbed it, 
and I'm going to walk to the first floor conduit. It's still white, so that means that it lined up okay. And now I don't foresee anything being in the way of the second floor either. I'm more concerned is the third floor. So let's walk, bring it over. And it's red. Okay, so something is in the way. It looks like this one, it's reaching this one. So we'll go ahead and run it to this large one here. This does not have a power source right now. I didn't connect it to the generator yet. So let's do that now. And you'll notice that I connected all three generators to each other. So that gave us nine power to share between the pylons. Hi, buddy. Oh, I didn't know you were here. Okay, so let's give it a trough real quickly. And there goes another space issue. But we'll put it next to the... To the garden area and hopefully that's okay wherever you put the trough is where the brahmin will stay in that area so that kind of without tying it down you know keeps it in a certain spot all right now i want to do the third floor we may need to put a pylon further up Let's try, before we do that, let's take a look and see if the electricity that we're running to the first and second floor is reaching the third floor. If it's reaching the third floor, then we don't have to run a third power line to the third floor, but if it isn't reaching, we'll have to. Oh, look, it is lit, lit up. That's fantastic. It's reaching. Sometimes um, one way to know is place it before you put the power lines. That way, when you put the power lines in, you know whether your light bulb is in range. For example, if I move it to the right right now, it turns off because it's too far away from the power source. But the further I move it in, it starts to... Let me hit circle because don't now we've lost our power source now that I said something about it we lost it okay well that's why we have the conduit there we were gonna run power up here anyway so let's see I don't know why it turned off like that okay should be able to reach one of the um, pylons without an, any issue one other solution would be to just run this one to the other conduit. But you see the floor is in the way, so it will not, it won't work that way. I'm gonna just show you here. See how it's red? It means that the floor is, is blocking the connection. So, let's see if we can Find. It doesn't look like any of them are lighting up. Now, I do know that this is too far. This is way too far, but... Um, it would have worked on this one if it was not blocked by the floor. I think we can find a solution by putting a smaller pylon. And this is great to kind of get this on film because it shows you that... With a little bit of creativity, you can solve, um, you know, you can solve a problem. I tried to jump, but because we have the wire connected, it's not letting me. So, let's see here.
if we place it on the rear side of the building, we'll still be able to run electricity there without it being impeded by anything. I think that's what we'll do. This didn't work. <laughs> okay. Alright guys, thank you for hanging in there with me. We've got this down. I'm really glad I decided to do the electricity part on video because someone else may have ran into this problem and not know what to do. And now we can solve it together. I'm going to store this conduit piece. We'll attach it to the rear side of the building. Hopefully we can reach from back there. And it should be okay. Jump up here. Get him out of there. Um, it's in the way. One place, yeah, let's place it from up there. Okay, power connectors, and then the second one, the one that goes on the side of a building. This should reach. The light bulb also. Let's see? Yeah, look, it lights up perfectly. We can line it up with this pole here. And now, all that's left is to test the connection. And that we do by checking to see if the light bulb is turned on. This is exciting. Okay, second floor is also good. Third floor, perfect. It worked, guys. This is fantastic. So, wow, this is fantastic. And now you can decorate from here, put a couple paintings up, put some carpeting down or not, <laughs> whatever you whatever you want to do I I don't know if it actually does increase their happiness um, you know for the happiness meter but I like to think that it does count that it does matter that not only just for decorative purposes but it makes it feel more homey and you know everybody lost everything that they had they, for 200 years there's not been the conveniences of, of home so, I like to make the settlements feel cozy, and I try to make them happy. I like it. <laughs> now, the first floor can be designated for beds, and you can put equipment outside. It really does not have to be inside. I like the idea that we can have this open for more beds because um, I think right now at Sanctuary I've got between 19, I think 19 people. And at one other settlement I have 20, but it hasn't gone above that. It's been at 19 or 20. So if we do reach 20 at this settlement, we can put the extra beds on the first floor. Put a... I think you can put, um, yeah, you can put some furniture down here, like a little hangout area. Uh, 
I like seeing the settlers get together in the little setup that you put down. It looks cool. If you have a TV that you scrapped or you have the um, blueprints for, you can put it on top of this and it will pick up the signal of our power lines that we put down. But it's better if you put it on this side of the house because for resources, I didn't put a lot of those conduits. You can put more and light this whole place up, but I know that supplies are at a minimum right now when you're just starting the game, so this was um, kind of my my way of, of, you know, fixing it up nice, but still without using too many resources. a couple couches down here. And I think it'd be nice to have a radio. might be in miscellaneous I love the stuff from the DLC guys just got it recently really like it can't wait to do a video and play around with that stuff here we go so it was in the decorations folder section of uh, under miscellaneous and if you also want to put the radio down there's a classical radio or diamond city radio we're gonna put classical here And it doesn't use too much resources. And that also, you don't have to run a power cord to it. It'll work uh, with the electricity that we've run um, and connected to the building. So one last little touch. It's nice, they have abstract, they have some cute animal uh, paintings. There's some nature paintings, beautiful. Even though there's a little bit of burn damage, you know, from the, the bomb, it's still in really good shape. That's beautiful. I love painting landscapes myself. I'm going to do another tutorial on one this coming week, uh, this month actually. And it's actually really cool to see it here in the game. Alright guys, I'm really happy with how it came out. If you have other ideas on things you want to do, to spruce up the house please leave a message down below and let me know i read every message i reply to every message and i really am excited to hear about what um your houses came out like with it at outpost zamonji and if you have other ideas for any other builds any other uh tutorial that you would like to see me do or a painting that you would like to see me do I would love to hear it. Thank you so much for subscribing and liking the video. I will see you on the next one. Ciao.